Welcome to the Tax Sale Podcast, where tax sale investing is made easy. My name is Casey Denman. I'm a tax sale veteran and the leading tax sale expert. I'm the author of the Tax Sale Playbook, founder of the Tax Sale Academy, and I am your host right here on the Tax Sale Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. As a reminder, this podcast can be found on a number of different platforms, including Spotify, Spotify Video, YouTube, and wherever podcasts can be found, you can check us out and download us on your favorite podcasting platform by going to taxcellpodcast.com. And as a reminder, these podcast episodes are completely free, no membership charges or anything like that. And they're brought to you through and because of the Tax Cell Academy, which you can learn more about at taxcellacademy.com. All right, today I want to discuss what it takes to design a tax cell business that is, well, easy. You know, I see all kinds of ads online and I get all sorts of emails about this opportunity or that opportunity and people want to know what I think about this or that. Listen, you can make money doing lots of stuff. When I was 15 years old, I literally made money digging ditches. But over time, I realized I did not enjoy digging ditches. It was far from an easy way to live my life. I think that one of the most important things to keep at the forefront of your mind is that you do not want to create yourself a low paying minimum wage job you're working hours and hours at. Or if you're a part-time investor, you don't want to create yourself a second job that is low paying. You can determine this by figuring out your hourly rate, of course. You're always going to be trading some sort of time for some sort of money. The idea here is that you want to trade as little time as possible for as much money as possible. So here's what I mean. Let's say that you are struggling with whatever it is you're doing. So you decide to double down and you're putting in grueling 50 hour weeks. This isn't all that uncommon for a lot of business owners, believe it or not, but you only still manage to bring in say $30,000 per year. That equates to about 11 bucks, 12 bucks per hour or less than the minimum wage in many areas. Now on the flip side, let's say you've got it figured out. You're working just 15, 20 hours a week as a tax sell investor researching, buying, marketing, and selling properties. Let's say that you're making 300K per year off of your business. That's something like 380 bucks an hour. What the most phenomenal balance is, in my opinion, is to bring in the income that you desire to live the lifestyle you want to live while still being able to have the time to do whatever it is else that you want in life. I've been in business where I've been making crazy money, but I have absolutely zero free time, which in my opinion is really no way to live. So understand that trading time for money is acceptable. In fact, it is required. It's necessary in this life. The goal is to find the sweet spot between investing a low amount of time for a high return, low input, high output. That's what we are after. Now I'm discussing this with you first so that you always are reminded to keep it at the very forefront of your business. You do not want to create yourself a low paying job that you're working lots and lots of hours at that you absolutely hate. Now, obviously it doesn't work quite like this from day number one when it comes to the required time investment. In fact, it might not work like that even for year number one for you. There's kind of a hockey stick type curve in the relationship between time and income as a new tax cell investor. What this means is that it's gonna start off slow, but eventually you'll start growing rapidly. And I'm not talking about actual returns or anything like that initially, I'm talking about factoring in the time that you spend learning. Your time learning is and should be substantial. Just going for it out of the gate without learning is a tremendous way to lose lots of money very quickly and stunt your long-term progression as a tax sell investor. But when you take the time to learn and then you put forth the effort, you will reap long-term benefits. Now, as you begin your business, you should absolutely keep your focus on the easiest investment possible. You want that first property, or maybe the first few properties, to be properties you can buy at a decent price, sell at a decent price, make a decent profit, and move on without any potential issues. Notice, I didn't say you had to buy it at the lowest price possible known to man, or that you must sell it at the highest price possible that you could ever get for the property. Instead, I said get in an investment, get out of an investment, make some money, 
move on while you're building momentum. That first property should be the most simplistic investment you can think of. If it's a quarter acre lot down the street from your house that you can make a few thousand bucks on, fantastic. Obviously, it's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult than that, but hopefully that illustration shows you the idea of what you should be looking for. You know, the fastest way to failure in the tax sale business is investment number one, being lousy. Whether it comes down to the valuations that you put on the property being off or simply buying a property that is too complicated, that's a fast way to failure. I see new investors all the time who email me or message me wanting to know my thoughts about this property as their first property. And it'd be something crazy, like a lighthouse or an old school building or a house that has code enforcement leads into the hundreds of thousands is falling down, but they think I can handle them. Stop. Your first investment must be the easiest investment you will ever make. Everything else as you move forward can eventually be more and more difficult. Now I've bought and sold everything from vacant lots to 50,000 square foot commercial buildings to entire residential subdivisions at tax sales and nearly anything else that you can dream up. But I've also built myself up to that point, even though, I'm looking for a number of things. To this day, I will still look at those simple vacant lots on a nonstop basis because I know it's gonna be extremely easy money. Now, easy for an investment is also gonna be more than just a specific property. We also want to have a nearly no friction type deal in what we do. The harder it is to do something, the more likely we're gonna give up. Now, perhaps, not initially when we're all excited and we're just learning about the tax sale business, but eventually, if there's a lot of friction in what we're doing, that excitement is gonna drain off and we'll give up. So for example, I do not recommend that you take two weeks off work, fly across the country, drive by hundreds and hundreds of properties, and then attend your first auction. Sure, this approach could work eventually. It actually worked quite well for me. I actually write about it in Tax Sale Playbook, but that was many, many years into my career. Is it wise to start off with that approach? Absolutely not. My personal progression was I started the local, then I went to another county and another. Eventually I added another state, then another and another state. And this is over the course of five or 10 years. Nothing happens overnight in this business. Now, if your state that you live in right now is just a lousy state to invest in, no problem. Learn how to invest in other states, but approach it cautiously. So in endurance sports, many athletes have what they call their all day pace. This is the pace in their specific discipline, whether it's running, biking, swimming, whatever it is, that they feel they could literally do all day long. It requires effort, of course, but not so much where they'll think that they're going to fatigue out very quickly. What you need to do as a tax sale investor is find your all day pace, find the routine, find the efforts, find the areas that you are happy with at this moment that requires very, very little friction. Maybe you attend just one tax sale every single month. This requires you to invest, say, five, 10 hours worth of time, which is all the available time that you are able to invest into it right now. Then you place proxy bids and you're good to go. Fantastic. If that's your all day pace, great. Maybe it's one tax sale a week you go to, maybe it's one a day you go to, whatever the case is, find that sweet spot where you are extremely comfortable yet still making money. Find your rhythm that has zero friction. Find your all day pace. And again, this does take time. But the goal is not to see if you can make money while working like a dog. Yes, of course, you're gonna have to invest time and effort into it. Make no mistake about that. But in the end, it goes back to the trading time for money theory. What is the best use of our time as tax sell investors? Now, once you find that sweet spot, that all day pace, the stuff that you know you can make money with, and for some people, it's gonna be difficult to find that spot. But once you do find it by investing the required time, by learning the proper strategies, then you can begin expanding. It's gonna be like the first time you did anything. The more repetitions you have, the more deals you make, the easier it's going to get. 
Now, eventually, you might come to a sticking point where you realize you bit off a little bit more than you can chew. Maybe it's a new area that you're investing in now that you don't fully understand or if it's just too competitive. Perhaps it's a new state that has some very complex laws. At that point, you can decide whether you need to pivot and find a different angle or if it's worth investing more time to learn that specific strategy or that specific area. Now, all of this is different for everybody. I've got some academy members who do nothing but go after vacant lots where they can flip online without ever seeing the properties. They'll send a scout there, but beyond that, they don't see them and they make a grand to three grand every single lot, more or less paperwork than anything else. I've got others who target houses that nobody else will bid on because they have massive, massive code violations, but they are so comfortable with their negotiating and speaking skills to the county commission or to the city council that they're able to get these fines knocked down substantially, that they're willing to take that risk. I've got some members that only invest online. I've got others that travel the country investing. The definition of easy is going to be different between every single person. But once you learn, you must start small. Start simple. Start with your all-day pace. The thing that requires minimal effort yet still produces decent returns to you. And then over time, as you gain that experience, as you put in those repetitions, turn up the pace slightly. Maybe you expand areas. Maybe you expand property types. Maybe your marketing style begins to evolve a little bit. Make minor tweaks. Make minor adjustments. Control your growth very, very closely until all those things become easy as well. And then keep this snowball effect going. Don't make the mistake of biting off more you can chew at the start of your tax sale business. Because if you do, it's going to put you out of business. Start small. Allow it to grow as your confidence and experience grows, and you will reap the benefits for decades to come. That's all I've got for you today. Listen, I truly hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Tax Cell Podcast. If you do enjoy these episodes, please do me a huge favor and leave a positive review on whatever podcasting or video platform you're listening to me on or watching me on right now. This podcast, again, is completely free. There's no membership chargers or anything like that, but your reviews that you take the time to leave really help us out. And they might even serve to pay it forward for somebody else who learns about this business simply because you took the time to tap a five-star review or leave us some positive feedback. And as always, if we can be of any additional help, make sure you check us out at TaxCellAcademy.com. Hey, thanks so much for listening to us on the Tax Cell Podcast. We'll see you next time right here. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.